backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, everybody. You may know Tommy Green from the classic metal band Sleeping Giant. His new project, Holy Name, has just been released. Let's hear more about it. My guest today is Tommy Green of Holy Name. This is our second interview. Our first one is available on podcast platforms as well as on our website. Last time we talked about Sleeping Giant, your struggle with loss, struggles with your faith in the church, your ministry run against traffic. You had a few singles from the Holy Name Project out, but it's here. It's here. Yeah, we got to talk about it now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Tell us about this album that was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think we were supposed to have this thing out like early 2022, maybe like closer to Easter. um, And the supply like delays for vinyl were so crazy that for Face Down, it was like, man, we can't even get your records, you know, forever. And so that was one of the things that kind of set the timeline back it gave us more time to kind of put stuff together and and have a better plan yeah it was it was interesting how it all kind of came together because it definitely wasn't the plan so yeah very very interesting like putting songs together for friends um putting songs together together and just thinking like i I wonder what these things are going to turn into and i don't know i'm really really proud of the record i think it's really cool i'm super stoked about it it feels like a surprise in a lot of ways and the reception of it has been incredible that feels like a miracle. Well, it is incredible. Yeah, it's super wild. It. <laughs> it's been kind of crazy. I don't know. What do you think or what do you hear? Because you were around for singles, kind of as you're checking it out. Give me your opinion. I enjoyed like singles, but then when I saw it all together, and we're going to talk about the Veeps presentation. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. yeah. When I heard it all together, and this is this is just me, I, I always enjoy hearing it done in order, mm. or at least as a whole. Yeah. changed it into something else. Huh. Yeah, I hope so. I I know that in my brain, I just want to put out singles for a while. Like, I just feel like if you don't have a full kind of idea for a thing, I feel like records are wild now. Like, mm-hmm. and for the most part, for your fans, people that would come and actually see you, you get a handful of songs from each record that they're going to be able to listen to. So I didn't see or think full length record when we were doing this stuff. And then as we got the opportunity to do it, just kind of filling it out, adding different things, even with interludes and stuff like that was just like, okay, we can build this. Um, but I don't feel like we have any like throwaway tracks that like, Mm -mm. you know what I mean? So I I feel stoked about that because we built the record with a mindset of singles for each one. So I, I feel like, okay, cool. Like I like all of our songs and I can't say that about every other band I've been a part of or any other, every other record that we've been a part of, there's definitely been some songs where I'm like, yeah, we're never going to play that live. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> like that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, this is cool. Um, what stood out to you when you heard the whole thing? Like when you said it kind of turned into something different for you, it what does that It became more of a worship service. Huh. And then seeing it done as a worship service. Yeah. Like, yes, this is what this is. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend of mine, he told me that, I hadn't thought about it. I I know that's goofy to say. I haven't, I know how we set it up on the live presentation, if that's what you're talking about. Like we we actually did the live stream when we set it all up. I told uh, some of the dudes, I was like, you know, we're filming this as if it's like, we're there. It's, it's our first show, you know? And I think just in general, like the imagery and some of the stuff we got to put together, I almost didn't think of it that way when we were doing it. And so it's really interesting. Um, My homie called me and was like, yo, that was really, really incredible. You know, he just had thoughts and feelings about it. And I was like, what did it look like for you? And he said, well, when I saw it, like start to finish, and he knows this really well, he was just like, it's interesting because it almost to me looks like a conversation between you and the Lord where you're just like, I don't know where I'm going. And by the end of it, there's a sense of almost like, where else can I go? That was good. It was just really beautiful. And I felt like, oh, well, yeah, that's kind of been the journey. So that's cool that that came through. That wasn't intentional. So yeah, I wanted it for other people. I guess it's cool to to see that even the personal part of it was still coming through. So that's kind of cool. Watching you worship and then lead worship with the band and the the screamers and the, you know, it was really good. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Yeah. I feel like I've watched it a handful of times now with with my Chrissy Green and and we'll just like put it on and I'm like, oh, wow, like 
that's pretty cool. Like we watched it a bunch in the edit. We're trying to put it all together and make sure we liked everything. And, um, but then to actually see it, like the, the event itself, it was really special. I didn't know what to expect. And my mom came over, some of my best friends came over and we just watched it. It was really, really cool. I actually felt like connected to people, even though like we, it was just like us, but then watching everyone like chat online, that was a cool thing, man. I was hoping it would be great. And we did it. We did it. Hey, yeah. we did it. The live stream. Was this something that your team came up with? No, we talked about it a little bit. The initial thought was I wanted to do like Maverick City, but our style of music. And I just, I've never seen that. And I thought that's what makes the hardcore scene so awesome to me is everybody else singing. And so I just thought, well, let's do something like that. And um, in trying to kind of put it together, I just love the production of watching a room full of people praise. And so, you know, that just that vibe of like, let's get a choir of people to sing with us. And that was the initial thought was how do we get to a place where we can do that? How do we do it really well? And then um, just by the grace of God, my dear friend, Laz, um, who used to sing in a face down band called Leaders. He's just an amazing dude. He filled in on a Sleeping Giant tour with me. And he's just a beautiful, beautiful soul. And he got into production for churches and he's actually really, really good at it. And so he came through on a trip and I said, this is what I was thinking of doing for Holy Name. We're in different states. It's like, we aren't even together. I'd love to put something together that can go online because I, I want to do it well. I want to make sure that we play together but then we actually make sure that it really is awesome. I want people to really be able to enjoy it for a long time. And I don't know when we're ever going to play shows. So I'd love to do something that can live in that space a bit longer. And he's like, dude, that's all I do now. And I was like, man, would you help us? And he was like, dude, totally. So initially we were just going to film it and it was just going to go, I think on YouTube. Like, I think we just wanted to put it out. And then um, I'd said, you know, it'd be cool to do like a live stream. I know that in working with Pivot, like our social media company, we were talking about having our own live studio and being able to stream artists and stuff. And during the COVID lockdown, when you watched a lot of bands doing that, I remember thinking that is so cool. You can still create an experience for people. And that's awesome. Went in the back of my mind, but that was kind of as far as it went. And I thought I, what I would say to people when we were setting this up is like, we're doing a, a re recording, a performance. I want it to be really awesome. I almost want it to be like Holy Name's first show, but we're doing it in this really beautiful sense. And they're like, that's cool. And so we're in Chicago. We're filming this thing. I know we're going to perform it. I know everyone's there to perform it. We're going to do our best. And I'm sitting next to Ryan Clark. And he's like, hey, you know, Demon Hunter did a live stream event. And it was so awesome. And I'm like, that's like a show thing, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, it was, it was really incredible for us, our fans, like their whole... Um, community really enjoyed it. And I was like, that's what I want to do. He's kind of just was like, you should really think about that. And I said, okay. So I just looked at everybody. I was like, all right, we're filming this and we're just going to live stream it. And it was the night before we're filming. I'm like, this is what we're going to do. And so um, we filmed it the next day as, and I'm thinking, I don't know how this works. And then I called JD at FaceTime. She said, Hey man, I think we're going to do this. Like we're going to do it like as a, as a live stream. We're going to put it out as our first show. And he's like, that sounds great, man. Got your back, you know? So initially it was just to capture an honest performance and like get everybody there and make it awesome. And then it turned into, well, let's find the best platform to put it out as a live stream event. And then let's just do that. So it was kind of a mishmash, but it's been in my head since we were putting out singles. I think I was just like, we got to do some kind of performance, but I don't know when we're ever going to get on the road. I don't think we're ever going to really be like a touring band. But I do, I do know that I want people to feel like when we perform, it's special and it means something. And so it was always there, but I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to come out. Yeah. We had people watching from America and Latin America and Europe and Australia and New Zealand and Bulgaria and Romania and like all these people messaging us like, hey, this is so awesome. So you're going to do other things with some of that footage? Are you going to do yeah, yeah, yeah. like YouTube releases and things like that with it? Yeah, or? I think we've, we're, we're putting together kind of a cool plan. I know I don't want to, I don't want to say too much. Yeah. yeah, we're not ready. And I don't want to say we're going to do one thing and then end up not, but it's such a cool thing. Anyway, so yeah, that was rad. That was way rad. 
let's go back a little bit. I want to talk a little bit more about the songs and the albums and the people that are featured on it because it's like a smorgasbord for people yeah. who like metal, okay? Yeah, yes. It was a whole new approach to worship, like maybe even redefining worship in some ways. Oh, wow. Because it's, oh. it's very different than even a metal worship that I've heard. Sure. And I, I saw several times that y'all labeled it violent worship. Yeah, that's Joey for sure. Joe, our, my brilliant writing partner, and he's the whole reason that Holy Name is Holy Name for sure. Like, I can sing. I'm myself. And with my background, people know who I am. But Joe is like the genius of this thing. And so he just was like, I want you to do your thing. And then I want to just be able to kick walls. And so I was like, sure. So that was his whole point. His, his point was trying to make as heavy of riffs as he can. And he's always on the quest to make a heavier riff. And then I just am trying to hear if I can hear something pretty to put on top of it. So that's that's kind of how that goes. So yeah, he he liked violent worship. He thought that was cool. And, and say that there's this call of, you know, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And that's partly where this came from, um, but the violent lay like, hold of it. And so there's this discipline and pursuit and struggle. There's a struggle in faith. And I think with Holy Name and with me and Joe, um, I think with Chayton, our bass player, with Rookie, our drummer, I think we could all say that we are struggling to follow Christ. We struggle through this thing and, and it's okay. So it's worship, but it, it's in the midst of the violence of both the spiritual violence that it takes to truly grasp humility and Christ-likeness and emptying of yourself and repentance and all that stuff. It's super, super hard for the prideful soul of man. <laughs> and so it takes a spiritual violence to truly empty yourself and become full of the virtues of Christ. And then also the music itself is driving energetic and violent in its own way and i think that's also a head nod to the culture that we're a part of you know it may be violent but it's not chaotic no no it's not at all again it's like the holy spirit broods over the the face of the waters and out of that there comes a sense of of timing and creation and yeah i like that i like that a lot it is violent and but it's it's ordered there's a reason and um it's structured for a specific reason so that's pretty cool yeah Listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Out Performance Shop is a proud supporter of Solid Rock Radio. They specialize in retail and wholesale of automotive, high performance, racing, and off road products. They also carry a variety of accessories from remote control cars to rock and roller multi carts. On the web at outperformance.com. Where did you meet Joe and who is Joe Holt? Joe Holt is the mystery man, dude. I met Joe when I was in Sleeping Giant. I met him uh, a number of times, and I remember him coming to me probably 12, 13 years ago. And he was super young. He was dating his wife at that point. And he had a hunger in him for uh, mentorship, for leadership. He was a young man that was following Christ, but you could see he was battling and wanted to have some support in his life. And so initially he reached out to me and Chrissy kind of just like, would we just be some people in his world that would help with direction from time to time? And it was very like disconnected, but still kind of there. And he became part of our church community, the Rev gatherings and would fly out to Utah once a year. And we'd see him and Shauna and he'd get on the leaders calls and stuff. And so when we were leading our kind of our Christian community for a long time, he was, he's been a part of Rev for you know, 12 years at this point. And so I watched him and Shauna get married. They have three kids. He um, works uh, really hard uh, as a manager at a warehouse in, in Minnesota. And she's a teacher at a school. And um, he kind of let go in a lot of ways of like the music dreams that he had. Um, I think he always wanted to be like in a band and tour and play heavy music and all that stuff. And so he filled in with a couple bands from that area. But in a lot of ways, it was like he was just making his own music at home. He just would put out all sorts of stuff. He's prolific. He can he can write any kind of genre. Like he's really, really good at what mm. he does. And so he's just been, but he's been on his own. I mean, like fully on his own, just doing his own thing. And so during COVID, everyone was locked down and for the Rev kids. And so I was just like, hey, well, why don't you guys write a song wherever you are and we'll commemorate this weird time on the planet. Not a lot of people did it. Our UK crew, they're in Birmingham in England and they do uh, heavy style praise and worship at their church services and they put out a really cool song um one of our dudes in salt lake put out a song and then just it wasn't really happening and so i i had a acoustic worship songs that i'd written years ago 
And then one of my favorite songs that our pastor here, Aaron, in Salt Lake, he had written a beautiful worship song years ago called Fall on Your Knees. I told him when he wrote it, when I first heard it, I was like, I'm going to steal that and I'm putting that on a Sleeping Giant record because everybody needs to hear this song. And he just laughed and I was like, dude, I'm telling you, like, it's so beautiful. And so we ran out of time when we were recording I Am, uh, the final SG record. We just ran out of time in the studio. And so it didn't happen. And so I just called Joe and was like, hey, man, let's cover a couple of songs. Like if I send you one of my acoustic songs and then let's cover Aaron's uh, worship song and let's make them heavy. And he was like, yes, OK, I can do that. And so it started with um, a song I wrote in 2014 called Meet Me Somewhere Quiet. And then I sent him Aaron's song, Fall on Your Knees. And then I had another song that I did with a friend of mine that was almost like an electronic like trap project. He had a trap project called Drug Train. He wasn't a Christian kid. He's just a dear friend of mine. And I said, hey, would you be cool with me singing worship over Drug Train stuff? And he was like, yeah. So he came to my house and we recorded a chorus over this like hip hop beat. And that was Perpetua. And so I sent Perpetua. I sent Meet Me Somewhere Quiet. And then he already had Aaron's song. And I said, let's just make these heavy and like see what happens. And so that was kind of how the songs started. That's how Joe started writing with me. And then within us putting out the first few singles, people were really stoked on what we were doing. And it was, you know, we're kind of independent, kind of doing our own thing. And it was really fun. And he got to kind of go crazy and do his stuff. And then um, JD hit us up. I think we were three or four songs in and just said, do you guys want to put out a record? And I was like, I'm good, man. I, I did that, but Joe has not. And so I just called Joe and was like, dude, I'm, I'm with you. If you want to do this, we can do it. If not, and he was like, yeah, man, that'd be a cool experience. And so I was like, yeah, it'd be really awesome. So called JD back and I've known him since I was like, you know, 19. I mean, I've known him forever. And so I was like, yeah, man, that sounds great. Like, we'll do this. And he was stoked. And so that kind of put us on the track of, all right, Joe, like, let's start putting songs together. So that's where, for me, it went from, covering some songs or kind of just like going slow to, oh, okay, now we need to put out some music. And he was writing different songs now. The songs themselves were heavier. And so they kind of demanded a level of intensity and like they needed, they needed a different texture. And I'm a big fan of hip hop. And my favorite hip hop songs are usually collaborations between different rappers. I always feel like my favorite rapper does better work when there's some other dude in the studio that he's got to go head to head with. And so I always feel like I love when there's multiple people on songs I have since I was in Sleeping Giant. I was just like, I want to get as many people on a record as I can. I just get to do what I want. <laughs> and so I just, I don't want to yell. So if there's a heavy part, I'm going to have someone else do it. And so I just started calling friends of mine that I've known since the road and just saying, will you write? Would you write a part? Would you sing a part on this song? It, I don't have an agenda about what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. And if anything resonates with you, let me know. And so it was so easy because a lot of these dudes, we've had years of friendship. And so it was just really easy to like reach out and go, would you be down? And they're like, yeah, man, of course. And so, so grateful to them because it just, I don't know. It's just, it's not as fun without them. And I, I like that a lot. I like being able to stay in my lane. I get to be quiet and they get to be loud and that's cool. So that's kind of how that goes for me. Kind of a tag team. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's talk about some of those. It's like a gold mine of vocalist. It is. These are incredible people. These are incredible people. Yeah. Well, let's start with Ryan. Ryan mm -hmm. Clark of Demon Hunter. Yeah. Like, I mean, I didn't have to even look up to know who I was listening to. <laughs> yeah, like... he's got such a dude. He's got such a great voice. And since the Sleeping Giant, you know, Sons of Thunder record, we had him on our second record all those years ago. And then we toured with him. Um, and so just to I don't know. I just enjoy talking with him. And I did a podcast for our church community at one point called the Rev Talks podcast. And he was a guest and he's just an easy, he's a fun dude to talk to. And he's been around a long time. He's a real and thinker. He, yeah. He's deep water and he's yeah. wonderfully creative and he's just a great guy to talk to. It's like fun for me because he's such an introvert in many ways and I get to be an extrovert, you know? Um, yeah. He's a poet. Yeah. He totally made the sect too. I, I really appreciated him because it was like, I told him kind of what I was dealing with. And there's a phrase in that song that became to me, the main theme of why this record is what it is to me. And okay. that was that I used to be afraid I would see you and I'm seeing you differently. I used to be afraid you would meet me, but now I see you in a different light, which is about death, death itself. 
I had other stuff written down. And then when I was recording that part by myself, I remember hearing that in my head and kind of going, yeah, that's kind of the point, isn't it? I used to be really, really scared. And now after seeing so much death and having this experience of Christ and sort of walking it out, it's like, oh, that that's kind of the whole journey of this record, isn't it? So then to have him in his own way, he wrote that beautiful singing part at the end, the, you know, stand upon the edge of the valley, I fear no great unknown. Like that's all him. And I was just like, that's perfect. So yeah, he's just incredible. That was that was such a gift. Like icing on the cake. Dude, he's he himself is a gift of a human for sure. Yeah. Creed. Oh yeah, with Eric Sean Gregson. Absolutely, man. That's my guy. I mean, you gotta <laughs> think like we've been we've been through like everything since we were like eighteen, you know. So he's one of my favorite Bible teachers in the world. And he's an incredible thinker. In my opinion, he does to a lot of theological concepts and ideas, but more so he breaks down Christ sometimes like parables or stories around Jesus. He's the type of dude that he used to do body work. He used to build hot rods and he used to build cars. So the dude is thorough. He's a thinker, right? So dude, he, he's very, very personal and very private with his music. And so he'll build it himself. Like he'll do that. And then when he's ready, he'll share it. And so um, for this, we were kind of going through a different journey. And I just remember calling him saying, well, I'd love for you to sing on this spot. You know, it's just kind of theology. And anyways, and we just been talking about God stuff, you know, every other day, I swear, we just talk all the time. And so he was like, yeah, man, I'm down. Joe wrote the melody of that. And it was different. I don't think he loved his lyrics. I don't know if I remember them, but I remember the melody. And he said, can you do the lyrics? And I was like, yeah, man. And in some ways, I guess I just was thinking of like Rich Mullins and he wrote the song about, you know, the creed and he just went through it. And I remember hearing that and thinking that's where I was anyway, theologically, like we were in it all the time. And so I was just like, I'm just going to sing that. Like if we have a chance to just put out a worship song that's going to give people like really cool theology, it's like pretty deep. You could spend your whole life kind of breaking that stuff down. And that's like the mysteries of the faith. Like, let's just do that. See where we end up. And so Eric then jumped in Death Star style and just like started going. But the real point of it is like, it's a presentation of the gospel, the redeeming power of God, what he does for humans, who we are, who the Lord is. And then just that whole idea of like, arise, oh God. It's a proclamation of the simplicity of the gospel as well. There's this element of what Jesus did, which is, that's almost like it's a head nod to some stuff that we were talking about back then. And so... And it's always cool because I feel like then people are like, oh, it's like the Sleeping Giant guys. So that was fun as well. So that was good. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Rich Mullins and Creed, the song that he did. Yeah. Because when I first heard that, I went, oh, Rich Mullins. Yeah. Because that was an era that I had just gotten into Christian music. And actually, I had Rich Mullins in my store for an in-store concert when I wow. was the bookstore manager. So I got to spend a little bit of time with him one afternoon. So cool. He's a punk rocker, man. I got a kick out of him. I, I read his book. Kind of crazy, think, man. He was. He was a wild dude, for sure. Anyways, but I just remember that. I, I don't know if I really ever listened to his version of it. And then I remember when I was in Atlanta, I'd first gotten saved. I was kind of on my own. Um, during this couple months season out there and my parents had like a third day CD and they covered it. They covered that oh, song. Yes, they did. And I remember hearing it and going, Oh dude, that's that song from that guy. That's crazy. And then I went back and listened to the original one, you know, with the, I think it was like a hammer dulcimer. Yep. Dulcimer. My hope would be with a song like that. If it sticks around at all, if it becomes a part of kind of like hardcore Christian metal sort of catalog for people yeah, in their brain, yeah. that at least we said some historical things that are that are unchanging. Yeah. And hopefully that can stick around. Or maybe that's just maybe that's just a new iteration of that. Or maybe it's just a declaration of orthodoxy in your music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah, that's cool. But yeah, I think that too. It's imperfect. It's not the whole thing. But there was just a part of like, this yeah. is good. Like this stuff mm -hmm. is awesome. And yeah we get kind of far away from some of that in, in the modern worship context and Jesus becomes a concept and some of the stuff gets really like weird. It's like, what are you really about? Do you know what you actually believe about this guy? Like, and there's these simple statements of faith that are so beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. I like that too. So yes, let's go with what you just said. That's fine. That's <laughs> okay. That's good. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. Fall on your knees with Brooke. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so... B Rock, dude, he's just a man. Gosh, I yeah, I just love Brooke Reeves. He's been a part of my experience for a really long time. When I was pastoring the church called Tithemi in Southern California before I moved back to Salt Lake City, so this is 17 years ago. 
the doom kids would get done with band practice on Sunday afternoons and then come to Tiffany and they were like little guys. And so I'd look up and it's like, Oh, the Riverside kids are in the back. And it was Brooke and those guys when they first started. And he's always just been such a, like, just a down dude, but he's such a good friend to me. And anytime I've ever asked him for anything, he's always like down to help. If you ever ask me for stuff, I'm always down to help. And so, um, I just remember thinking like, would you just sing on a thing? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And so that's also my brother-in-law, Aaron, that's his song. You know, it was like, I finally got a chance to make good on that promise to my brother-in-law, which was like, dude, I'm putting this song out. Cause he's like a Bob Dylan. He's, he's like a singer songwriter. That's like a hidden treasure. And he's one of my favorite worship leaders I've ever met in my life. And, um, he's been one of my best friends since we were, I don't know, 18 out here. So I've known him forever. And then he fell in love with my sister-in-law and now he's my brother-in-law. So that's tight. <laughs> So, anyway, so, so that's Aaron Craner's song. And um, man, I hope everybody knows how great his songwriting is. It's incredible. And then I just asked Brooke if he would just jump in at the end when it gets chunky. And he was like, yes, absolutely. So he did chunk it up. Yeah, dude, he's the best. It's <laughs> so good. It's one of Chrissy Green's favorite parts is watching him and Brian and everybody just slam at the end of the Veep's performance. She's like, it's just one of her favorites is just watching everybody go. That was so. my earworm today, by the way. That yeah. Chorus, that yeah. Harmony. Super good, man. It's super so good. Beautiful. Well, uh, you mentioned Brian. Brian Headwelt jumped into the live performance. Yeah, for no other reason than he's just my friend. Like, he came out to Salt Lake. <laughs> we were doing some business stuff. It was the day before corn played out here. Yeah, we just were doing business stuff. He came over to have dinner and just hang out with us, drove around and listened to that record. And he was like, initially, he said, Let me sing on um, Meet Me Somewhere Quiet. And I was like, I would love for you to sing all of the yelly, screamy parts that I have such a hard time with. Like, that would be awesome. And so he's like, OK. So initially he was coming out to Chicago to yell and sing on Meet Me Somewhere Quiet. Then he got there and was like, so am I playing guitar? And I was like, oh, my God. No, that's not what you man. All right, fine. So <laughs> so I was like, yo, come play guitar. So he just did that as a just. Well, as, you know, he'd rather friend. play guitar than sing. I he told him, singing. I was like, you said you don't want to sing anymore. I asked you to play guitar. And he's like, okay. And then on that same car ride, he's like, man, I want to sing on that part instead. And I was like, that's fine, dude. You can do whatever. I just want you to hang out with me. I don't care. And so then I'm thinking he's going to sing. And then he showed up. He's like, I thought I was playing guitar. And I'm like, no, man. Like, yes. Okay, that's fine. So anyway. That so, is so Brian. He was ready to go. He was he was amazing. So Next, they see Mike Felker from Convictions. How did you guys meet up? Well, I met him initially when we played Christmas Rock Night in Germany the last couple times. And I just remember they would just hold it down, man. They were just like about faith. They would talk about the Lord. They just, you know, they're just doing their thing. And he has an incredible voice. I mean, when my homie Jake got, uh, he got taken off the road a little bit. I think he got real right. sick or something for from August Burns Red. And then Mike filled in. I just remember thinking like, dude, Mike's killing it. Great job. In some ways, I just thought, we've never done anything together, but I'm trying to find people that would be awesome, that care about the Lord still. And there's just a lot of people from our scene that they've gone a different direction or they've kind of let go mm-hmm. of some of their conviction around their faith. And it's like, that's fine. That's their own journey. But just trying to find kids that were down. And so I was like, yo, Mike's still down. I'm like, I'll hit those guys up. And so I just hit him up and was like, would you want to sing? And he was like, yo, that'd be awesome. So um, kind of told him about the track and, and kind of what the story of that really was about. And then, you know, just said, go off and do your thing. And he's just got such a brutal voice that it was like, it's awesome. On point. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was awesome. Who have I missed? Joe okay. Mustin and Danon. Yeah, man. So Joe, I would just say, is one of my favorite humans in the whole world. Advent, I think, is like one of, if not the greatest Christian hardcore band in the history of Christian hardcore. Like, I just think they kill everyone. They're so good. And uh, we've had the honor of like touring with them and playing with them when I was in Sleeping Giant. When we played our final shows... I was like, we need Advent to play with us. I just want them to be with us at the end. And so they came out uh, from North Carolina. And, and so Joe is like a sincere and honest human. I, I say about him always, he's a righteous man. And I love his heart for Christ. And we've been around for a long time together. And so it's been really cool to like, just kind of chop it up with him. So to have him sing on Celestial was really tight. I sent him some of my thoughts, but he's got undying worship tattooed on his hands and so he's a worshiper like you don't need to coax him to be like hey right. sing praise he'll be like all right if i'm like honor god he'll be like yes like he's already <laughs> there i just kind of sent him some of the phrases that i had for the song and then he just kind of went off and um mm. to be honest with you like i cry nearly every time i watch the veeps performance that was one of my favorite moments of the day because we just got 
like into that, like so yeah. fast. So it was really, really cool. And um, he's just an incredible person. Yeah, he's one of my faves. Um, he got to be on Celestial. And Danon, he's in Nothing Left. Um, and to be honest with you, like uh, we toured with him when he was in his old band. It was called Bullet for Pretty Boy. And uh, Rookie, our old our drummer, he actually helped write some stuff for them at one point or like did drum work for them at some point. And so I kind of knew him from that band more. But um, Nothing Left had two really, really awesome records. But And so I just remember appreciating the pain that they were putting on the record. That's what I remember. And so I called him and was like, yo, I'm doing a project. And to be completely honest, and I, you know, I hope he forgives me for this is like, there's a part where he was still trying to figure out, like he was in his own spot faith wise of, you know, just, he's just figuring it out, you know? And he's like, I'm not like raw, raw right now. And I'm like, please don't be, I don't need you to be something else. Like if you want to be a part, put out whatever you can on the record and just be awesome to have your contribution. And that's always been kind of my standard is if you're honestly struggling, if you're honestly mad, if you're honestly happy, like just be honest and that'll come through. And so, um, told him about the thief on the cross, um, and just that story of kind of what it was about. And, and then, uh, Ryan Latru, who produced everything, they got together and they put the parts together for St. Dismas's, which is awesome. So yeah, he's incredible. Super, super cool. I hope it was cool for him because it was amazing for us on the project. So that was awesome. Before we go, uh, tell me about your new podcast. Me and Chrissy Green are launching a new one. And I'm stoked you asked. Like, it's going to be Trevor's helping us. And so we're going to be putting that out. But it's going to be, um, I believe it's just called the Run Against Traffic podcast. And so Chrissy Green and me are going to be um, essentially putting ourselves in the place of most people uh, when it comes to human trafficking or counter trafficking or what's going on. When we talk to people, they care a lot about it. They don't know what to do or they feel like they don't have enough information. There's a lot of cynicism in the nonprofit space. This feels like kind of crappy, like it's a crappy mm. space. People are dishonest. Yeah. They, anyway, so for us, we, we put a bunch of surveys out and ask people, you know, do you care? What do you think about it? What would you do? And so many people were like, of course I care. I don't know what to do, or I don't feel informed enough. I'm not really sure where to start. And so we just want to basically put ourselves at like the beginner level and help walk people through some of the complexities of the issues of human trafficking, talk with really cool friends in the world. Ultimately, it's like we want to help people feel informed about counter trafficking and aftercare and what people can do, and then ultimately become better people in the world. You know, hopefully they feel encouraged and inspired by the information, but then we also just want people to feel enriched in their life um, by some of the guests and some of the topics. So ultimately, it's like people are going to give us like, you know, 20 minutes or so of their day. We just want them to feel like they're really glad that they did. And and ho hopefully that will create the better world that we're kind of fighting for a little bit. So how about a message for your fans? For the people that are supporting what we're doing or listening for what we're doing, the number one thing is like, thank you. Like, thank you so much to everybody that's listening. I hope that on some level we are bringing encouragement and hope for people that are walking away kind of from their faith. I hope that we have borrowed this phrase a little bit, but there's men on the road to Emmaus and they're, they're leaving Jerusalem after Jesus has been crucified. And they said, we thought he was the guy. And they're talking to Jesus. Like Jesus shows up on that road and they're walking away. And he's like, oh, and they're like, did you not know? Like, we really thought he was the savior, but like, I guess he's not. And there's a lot of people in the world, I think, that feel like, I really thought Jesus was the savior, but I guess he's not. And I just, I hope that on some level, Holy Name can, that the Lord could use this vehicle of music to remind you that even if you feel like, um, well, you're like really far away or he's not who you thought he was. I hope that you'd realize that you could make your bed in hell and he will find you. He'll be there. And so for the people that care about our music, I really hope that we bring encouragement to you. And I want to let everybody know that I've gone through some really horrific stuff and he's still real to me and his presence and his love is still real. And I had to leave what I thought I knew and he was there the whole time. And I'm in a different place now and he's there. And so I just want people to feel encouraged that just because you feel like you're letting go of what you've known, it doesn't mean that he's letting go of you. It doesn't mean that you're too far gone and um, he's going to find you. Like that's what he does. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time out. I appreciate you. You're right. good. You too. Good night. Okay, bye.
Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more great music and check out my blog page on the Solid Rock Radio website for my guests' social media links. If you've missed any of my past interviews, you can find them uploaded to podcast.solidrockradio.org. Have a wonderful week and let's be kind to one another.